Hi, my name is Stephen Gregg, and today uh, the Lord has put it on my heart to uh, tell you my story, tell you my life story, a little bit about what's been going on with me over the last, you know, 20 to 30 years. Um, in a very short period of time, um, that God wants me to share this message uh, with you so that you can learn a little bit about what he's been doing in my life and how it applies to all of us. Um, just to go ahead and jump right in, in 1988, uh, I watched a video called Countering the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. Um, I was living in Hawthorne, California um, with some friends and at that time um, a friend of ours came over and brought this video and when I watched that video it um, inspired me like nothing you can imagine. I mean I watched that video and uh, I came up with this idea, I wanted to create this big community center and I wrote out this document, it was a four page document and it talked about this big community center I wanted to build and it was to help the poor, it was to help the business minded people, it was going to have uh, all types of things, computers in it, and a game room, and all kinds of things. And I really went after it, but um, before that, I went down to Los Angeles, and I went to an area called Tent City. And when I went to Tent City, I saw all the homeless out there, and I said, man, I have to do something. And so I was, I was uh, very inspired by that. And from that point, I decided to get into an industry called network marketing, you know, multi-level marketing. And the, the reason why is because I had no experience, I was shy, I was insecure didn't have a, um, a good job or anything, didn't have any college degree, so I decided to get into network marketing because um, I figured that was a way for me to generate a lot of money in that industry. And at that time, um, I you know started learning and got, I bought a tape series online. Uh, well, actually, it wasn't online at that time. It was an infomercial called Mega Memory, and it taught me this thing called the four levels of learning, and that's how my brain worked um, and how I could learn new information. And so from that point, I really wasn't scared to learn anything new, so I jumped from business to business, to job to job, trying to raise this money to build these community centers. And it was kind of crazy because I went for many years telling all my family and all my friends um, what I was going to do and, and my goal. And, you know, they heard me, they listened to me, but, you know, they weren't believing me, of course. And then, you know, I went to a church down in Los Angeles that, that year and it was, um, I heard a sermon and that sermon really inspired me also. That sermon was called Put Jesus on Your Boat. And when I watched that sermon, I actually got the uh, cassette tape, and I have it at home right now. And I watched that uh, sermon, and it really inspired me about that I needed to put Jesus on my boat. Now, I didn't know what that meant, because I was a party animal. I was going out dancing all the time and doing, you know, what uh, 20-year-olds do. And <clears throat> about seven or eight years later, I got involved in a business with a guy who made that tape. His name was Kevin, and that was in 2000, and actually in 1997. And in 1997, I got involved in the business with that guy, and um, at the same time I got involved in business with him, a gentleman named John came up to me at a McDonald's one day and introduced me to God and introduced me to his church. And so I said, okay, yeah, I'll go to your church service. And it was a park service and I went there and it was fun. <clears throat> and he said, one of the things that we got to do is we got to study the Bible if you want to become a member of this church. So I said, okay, no problem, let's do it. So we started studying the Bible. And after we started studying the Bible, some things came in with business. And I remember this vividly. I remember there was a big event going to be happening in um, Palm Springs, and I had to make a choice. Do I go to this church event, or do I go to this business event? And at that time, I chose to go to the business event. And I went there, and I remember I learned so much from Kevin and Chris and all the people that were there, and I kind of shied away from going to church anymore. And so for that, that happened in 1997. And so for about two years, I'm building this business, and you know, business didn't work for me. I got in trouble financially, and I ended up being about seventy-five thousand dollars in debt by the time you know two years went by. And then in two years from that point, um, I came running back to John, and and I remember it so vividly. I just want to tell you the story. What happened? <clears throat> it's like my conversion story. Um, I was me and a girlfriend had just broke up, and I was in my room, and I was uh, staying with a buddy of mine uh, named Malcolm, and and I was really depressed. I was really discouraged that day, and it was a Thursday night. It was Thursday day during the day. And I was sitting there, and I had a piece of paper in my, in my um, closet, and it was a newspaper. And I circled two jobs on it. And once I circled those jobs, I, I called one of them, and they said, come in for an interview tomorrow, which was Friday. Um, and I said, okay. And they said, because they have a training um, starting on Monday. So that Friday, I went to the job. <clears throat> I went down and interviewed, and they hired me on the spot. And then uh, that Saturday, I went out dancing, and you know, it was really miserable. I went to the same club I used to go to with my ex-girlfriend at the time. So I was discouraged, and I was drinking a lot and stuff. And I came home that night on Saturday night, and I'm sitting in my car, and I have two big bottles of beer, and I'm drinking the beer in my car and uh, reading the Bible at the same time. How ironic is that? And 
So I'm reading the Bible, and, and then, um, you know, God's talking to me for that day. And then the next day, um, come Sunday, same thing. I go to the club, but I didn't go in this time. I was so discouraged, I didn't even go in. I just sat in the parking lot, and then I came home and sat in my parking lot again and drank in my car, because my friend was living in the house, so and I didn't want to drink or run him, so I uh, decided to sit in my car drinking another two big bottles of beer and reading the Bible. And I remember I read one scripture in the Bible. It was Romans 8.28. It said, for in all things, God works for the good for those who love him. And I was like, wow, well, I love God. And, and then I started thinking about it. You know, what does loving God mean? And, and I started looking, thinking about it. Why I, I said I love this person. I thought about a person that I, I thought I loved at the time. And I said, well, what did I do for her? I said, I moved out here for her. I went to her school looking for her. I did this. I knocked on her boyfriend's door looking for her. I did crazy stuff because I loved, said I loved her. And then I said, I, well, what have I done for God? And I thought about it. And I said, you know, I don't do anything for God. I go to clubs all the time. I party and drink and do all kinds of stupid stuff. So I don't do anything for God. And then I said to myself in the car, and I said, well, what if, uh, you know, you were married to that girl. And you beat her every day. And you came home. You kicked the dog. And you didn't take care of the house. You didn't work hard. You didn't get her any home or do anything for the family. But every day you said you loved her. Would she believe you? And I said, no. I said, well, why do you think God believes you? Did you love him? And I said, wow, okay, you're right. And I said, well, let me, let me write down the qualities of a wife I'd like to have. And I wrote down all the qualities that I wanted to have of a wife. And then I said, where in the world am I going to find this woman? And I said, in that church. And so that moment, that Sunday, that happened. And then on Monday I went... Um, to back to that job, to that, that first interview. And when I went to that first interview, it was that Monday, and I went to the, um, to the actual training, and that Monday night, it's kind of when all this happened. I, I kind of said it was Sunday, but it was actually on Monday when, when I kind of cost like that. And that Monday, I just said, you know, I need to call John. I need to call John and say, you know, I want to go back to church. So I called him up, and I said, hey, John, what's going on, buddy? He goes, hey, how's it going? And I said, good. I said, you still go to that church? He goes, yeah, I still go. I said, okay, I want to get together and study the Bible again. He said, okay, let's do it on Wednesday. So this was a Monday. So that Tuesday, I go back in for the second day of training, and the very first person I see is a buddy named Chris, Chris Benjamin. And Chris, uh, you know, he had studied the Bible with me two years before, along with John. And I was like, Chris, what are you doing here? He goes, oh, I work here. And I said, you still go to that church? He goes, yeah, I still go to that church. I said, okay, I get it. No problem. I said, okay, God, what's the probabilities of that? So then, you know, I said, I'm studying the Bible with John in two days. Can you come? Or on Wednesday, will you come? He said, yeah. So we met at a restaurant. We studied the Bible. Four days later, I was baptized on October 17, 1999, uh, for the forgiveness of my sins. And that was the day I got received the Holy Spirit. And I was added to the body of Christ. And it was cool because I got in there <clears throat> and I was leaving. And in a couple months, a couple weeks later, actually, very fast, they started putting me into leadership because I had that kind of personality. And they put me into leadership and I started leading the singles. And there was a girl that was leading the singles with me. Her name was Jamie. And me and Jamie started leading the singles. And about eight months later, we, me and Jamie started dating. And now, uh, you know, almost a year later, a little over a year later, we got married. And we got married on April 18, 2001. And it was really cool because once we got married, you know, we thought things were going to be great. But the challenge was, you know, we didn't do the marriage correctly. Because our church, we used to have an attitude that we were going to have a pure relationship. And we, weren't, we didn't have a pure relationship. We did some things that we should have done before we were married. And so when we got married, our honeymoon was a mess. And we actually um, got taken out of leadership. Uh, we had to confess. We came back and we told the leadership what happened. And, and they took us out of leadership of the singles, it was very embarrassing, very embarrassing time for us because, you know, all of our friends were there and everybody saw us as leaders and then we fell big time. And um, that was okay because for the next seven years, you know, our marriage was, it was like living hell. We, we went through a hard time the next seven years. I believe God was purifying my relationship and, and me personally, but I had to deal with a lot of sin in my life, a lot of drinking, a lot of uh, on internet stuff and just a lot of bad things that I, I was a bad person internally. Uh, but God knew that and he worked through me and for the next seven years we, you know, repented in our marriage and it was really cool because in 2009 we got an award at our church for the most repented family. Uh, that was in 2009. And then what ended up happening, something very unique happened. 
Um, right at the end of 2009, we sold our business and basically got rid of our business. We were doing really well financially. Got rid of it. And then a friend of ours um, named Debbie um, went to my wife, Jamie, and said, you know, I think there's something about this Sabbath day or the Ten Commandments that we don't know about, that we're not teaching at church, and we need to find out about this. And so, you know, I'm a, I'm a Berean, so whenever someone says something about the Bible, I'm going to study it out, because I had never heard the word Sabbath before at all. So I just went and studied it out. I printed up every scripture on the word Sabbath. I went to BibleGateway.com and pulled up every scripture on, on the word Sabbath and every scripture on the word Commandments. And I started realizing that the Ten Commandments was all the way from Genesis all the way I, and this is all the way to the book of Revelation. And I started realizing that we're supposed to be keeping the Ten Commandments on the Sabbath day, and I was excited about it. Then we started watching these videos, and all these videos were convicting us. Like, man, how come we don't know all this stuff? And it was just showing us so much stuff that we just didn't know. Nobody had told us. Our ministers weren't talking about it or anything. So me, I was fired up. I took the things to my Bible stock leader, the scripture that I printed up, and I took it to him. His name is Steve, and I said, Steve, Check a look at these of scriptures. And he said, well, you know, that stuff, we don't have to do that anymore. I was like, well, I, I see it all the way from the beginning of the Bible to the end. But can you show me some scriptures that we don't have to do that anymore? So he didn't show me them, but he sent over the leader. His name was Kevin. He was the leader of the church at that time. Sent him to my house. I recorded the audio tape of this, this conversation. It was about a two-hour conversation. So I recorded it, and he started telling me all the reasons why we don't need to obey the Ten Commandments and Sabbath day. So said, okay, well, I have 150 scriptures that say we do. And you're not showing me any that say we don't. So from at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and keep honoring them. And he said, well, if you're going to honor them and you're going to do that, you can't, you know, talk about that at the church. And I was like, but it's in the Bible. That doesn't make sense. How come I can't talk about something in the Bible at church? That doesn't make sense. But he didn't want to go into detail. So I took it to the leadership. They had a leadership board above him. So I took it to all 50 of them. I printed up 150 scriptures and gave it to all 15 of the people. None of them looked at it. They looked at the minister and they said, whatever he believes is what I teach, and that's it. So we said, okay. So we took it to the elders of the church. When we took it to them, um, they didn't want to hear it either. They said, nope, we don't want to talk about that. And that was disturbing to me because I'm thinking, well, these are the leaders of the church that are leading me spiritually. How are they going to not look at the scriptures and let's discuss it? And they didn't want to have anything to do with it. <clears throat> so God said to me, Stephen, then you got to go. So it was one day, I remember, we sat down, me and the one leader and another brother um, at, a, at a restaurant near my home, and I pulled out the Ten Commandments, and I said, okay, tell me which one of these ten we can disobey today. And he said, well, I said, well, number one, can we have other gods today? He goes, no. I said, well, if we do have other gods, is it a sin? He said, yeah, it's a sin. I said, okay. Well, if we don't repent from that sin, can we make it to the kingdom of heaven? He said, no. He said, okay, well, what about the next one? I don't have any idols, and... Don't misuse the name of the Lord. That's the next one. I'm going through each one of them. And he said, no, and all of them. No, that we have to obey them, and we can't make it to the kingdom of God unless we repent. I said, well, the fourth one says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you should work, and the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord. On it, you do no work. I said, well, if we disobey that one, oh, well, they're all nailed to the cross. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. We can't take one out the middle and say that one's nailed to a cross. Either they're all nailed to a cross or they're not. And of course, he didn't want to talk about that. So I just turned the scripture over Matthew 5, 17 and said, the Bible says, don't think that I had come to abolish the commandments or the prophets. I didn't come to abolish them. I came to fulfill them. And so I didn't know what that meant exactly at that time. But I just said, you know, this is you. Because it says that if you don't obey them better than the Pharisees and teachers of the law, you'll never make it to the kingdom of God. So I decided, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and honor them based on what I see. And that's all I'm going to do. And so me and my wife, and I, I gave him a big hug. I said, bro, I love you, um, but I'm taking my wife to somewhere that we, that's going to honor the whole Bible, not just pieces of the Bible. So we didn't know where we were going at the time. So we left the church. And once we left the church, uh, we found a church in Temecula. Um, after a few months, we went there for two years, and they honored the commandments. They honored the Sabbath day. They honored the holy days. And we were learning so much. I mean, our kids were growing. We were learning. We were going to all the feast days and everything, and it was amazing um, but the challenge was that Debbie came to us again at that time after about two years and said, well, you know, I think the Sabbath is not based on Saturday. And I was like, what do you mean? Sabbath means Saturday. He goes, no, no, I don't, I don't know. I think it's something different. We're seeing something different in Scripture. I was like, what? She goes, well, it has something to do with the moon. I was like, something to do with the moon? Explain that. She couldn't explain it. So I said, well, let me do some research. I did what I did. I went in the Bible. I looked up new moon, and there it was, new moon celebration. And I was like, what the heck does that mean? 
So once I started learning that, God started showing me Hebrew, that in the Hebrew language, which is what the Bible back in those days were written in, that the Hebrews, they, they honored the, the calendar by the moon, the new moon, and all the feast days are all based on the new moon as well. And so I was like, well, what is this new moon? And so we looked it up. It's called a new moon celebration, a new month celebration. Moon means month in Hebrew. So I was like, wow, that's exciting. Okay, now I get it. So then God started showing us that the Sabbath is based on the seventh day after we spot the new moon. So I was like, wow, this is exciting. So we took him to the leadership of the church again, the one in Temecula. We shared it with him. And he was like, no, 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 that doesn't make sense. I, I'm Jewish and we follow what the Jews teach. I said, I understand, but God says follow what the Israelites followed in the scriptures. And he started revealing that the Israelites and Jews are two different groups of people. And I was like, okay, well, then we're going to have to go again. And so uh, they weren't super fired up about it, so we had to leave that church again. And now we're church homeless again. Now we're like, now where do we go? And we didn't know where to go, so we came home. And I said, family, this is what we're going to do. We're going to study the Bible at home by faith. It was tough. It was tough to tell my family, we can't be around our friends, can't be around our associates, can't be around our brothers and sisters, because they don't want us there, but we're going to follow the Lord. That's it. We're going to follow the Lord no matter where he takes us. And so that's what we started doing. We started looking at the scriptures in the Bible about the bride, and God started revealing to us prophecy in scripture about the bride of Christ and his end times. And then he started teaching us things about the different feast days. But the one feast day he did, that no one taught us about all this time was about the Feast of Trumpets. He didn't teach, no one taught us that. But the Lord himself started teaching us about the Feast of Trumpets and what the Feast of Trumpets mean and how it's tied to the, to the Bride of Christ. <clears throat> and most importantly, how it's hidden. It's a hidden manna in the scriptures. And so we started teaching this Feast of Trumpets and started sharing it with people. And God started growing our ministry. And then we went from one, and then one gentleman got baptized, and he came a part of the ministry and started honoring with us. And then he got married and brought his wife aboard, and she quit her job and started honoring the Sabbath day. And has been with us ever since. And then we met another person in business, and he came aboard with us, and he got baptized. And then another lady got baptized, and it just started to grow and grow and grow. And then it grew to about 12 disciples. And those 12 disciples were faithful every single year on the Sabbath. And then what ended up happening, God started spreading this message across the globe, across the world. And we started teaching this message to people all over the world and people in Africa and, and started learning this message and started believing the scriptures and started seeing the deception. And it's been such an amazing journey that um, God started teaching us about the Church of Philadelphia and who that is. And we believe we're the Church of Philadelphia. If you read in Revelation 3.7, that's the church that is spared from the Great Tribulation. Um, and, uh, you know, the other six churches are not. And so you want to really learn about that. And so we, he started teaching us what the mark of the beast is and how to avoid the mark of the beast, which we really learned is that the mark of the beast is taking, uh, is disobedient to the Ten Commandments and is disobedient to the Sabbath day because the Sabbath day is a sign between God and his people. And if a person is not baptized for the forgiveness of sin, they're not sealed by the Holy Spirit. And so God started revealing all this stuff to us. And when he started revealing it to us, we were so fired up. And so uh, God's just been um, taking this message, spreading it across the world, and the people that are seeing it and open, with an open heart, are learning it, and they're inspired to do so. They're inspired to obey it, and they're inspired to be part of the bride and part of the um, Church of Philadelphia. So I just wanted to share that uh, message with you, and I just pray that you take what you've learned and you do your own research. You know, I appreciate you listening to my story and just taking the time to pay attention to this. And if you want more information on some of these videos, you go to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash saved by truth number one. And I hope the Lord opens your mind um, and opens your heart to the Feast of Trumpets so that you can make it to be the Bride of Christ. Again, thank you so much for listening and you have a blessed day.